one of our last skills we're going to look at now is that you may try and integrate things that look like this. Now, I've given a massive clue about what we're doing because of the fact I've written skill number seven, partial fractions. However, if you look at this thing that you've got here, you should be able to tell me some things that we can't use and why we can't use them. Can you tell me something we can't use and why we can't? Yeah. Yeah. Hamza. Um, it's an x squared, so you want to do, you want to split them up. Thoughts? You're not listening to my question. My question was, what techniques can we not use and why? Oh, Hamza. Good. You cannot use the reverse chain rule because x squared does not differentiate to 2. There would need to be what on the top instead? An x. It doesn't have to be 2x. It could be any x, remember, because you can scale it afterwards. So if there was an x on the top, you would do reverse chain rule. And we would. what function would we consider before scaling? Pardon? Ln of x Good. You would consider ln of x squared minus 1, because we know that, that you'd get that form if it had an x on the top. So we cannot use reverse chain rule. Can we use integration by parts? No. No, it doesn't really look like anything we can do integration by parts to for this, OK? Um, we can't even really do, we couldn't do like algebraic division. We don't even know that you can do it. We can't do algebraic division. We can't split this fraction up in any other ways. So the only thing that we're going to be able to do here is think, OK, well, why don't we use partial fractions? If you remember all those lessons ago when I taught you partial fractions, I said, well, this is why we're learning it, so that we can do it within integration. So somewhere separate on your page, we're going to go to partial fractions. You should know x squared minus 1 is x minus 1, x plus 1. So as partial fractions, we're going to have a over x minus 1 plus b over x plus 1. So 2 is ax plus 1 plus b x minus 1. Efficient method for this, what should I do for my method? Sufian, what should I do? Good, I'll substitute x is 1. So I get 2 equals 2a plus 0. So a is equal to 1. I'll substitute in minus 1, so I get 2 is equal to minus 2b, because the 1 and minus 1 will cancel, and you've got minus 1, minus 1, which is minus 2. So b is minus 1. That's good to know, because now I'm going to be able to integrate by saying, instead of integrating that, I'm going to integrate its equivalent form. It's a bit like in the mock exam, where there was a question where you did partial fractions, and the second bit was meant to be differentiating. It's easier to differentiate the partial fractions version. Just like that, we're going to be able to integrate its partial fractions version. So that is going to be 1 over x minus 1 minus 1 over x plus 1. Because I've got two things here, I'm going to bracket the whole thing and say that I'm integrating the whole thing with respect to x. Now you've got to dig back through your memory. What is the integral of 1 over x minus 1? It is the ln of x minus 1. And you have to put the modulus around it because we're not sure whether x minus 1 will be a positive or a negative. And it just ensures that we're not going to input any negative values into the ln function. Okay. Um, and then the next bit, we're going to minus the ln of x plus 1 like this. Absolutely. So it's going to be the ln of, because of the subtraction laws, x minus 1 over x plus 1 plus c. Why does the modulus go around the whole thing? It's just an individual thing. Um, well, I could, because the ln of x this over this is the same as this over this. You can try that by substituting in some values, and you'll see that it's always true. Because if the top, oh, yeah, yeah. it's the same as it going like that, right? So by splitting it up into partial fractions, we're now able to actually integrate these different things that we've got here. I want to give us a tip that I think is now is the right time for me to introduce this tip. I'm very happy for it to stay left as plus c, but in the future, it's going to be annoying having plus c when everything else here is in terms of ln. So instead of introducing the constant as a plus c, I could change it from c 
into an ln constant. You don't have to do this yet. But instead of doing c, I might do ln k, because it's just a different constant, just taking the ln of a different number where it's equal to c. And the reason it might be useful to add a different constant instead of c is what do you think I can now do with these two lns? I can now put it together. I couldn't put the c with this. I had to have it trailing behind as an extra plus c. But if I said that my constant was ln k, I could change it to the ln of k x minus 1 over x plus 1. I've said that the k can be multiplied in because of the fact that when you add with logs, it's the same as multiplying. Might be useful for the future. In fact, it definitely will be useful for the future. If you do it with a plus c, it's absolutely fine too. But I just wanted to start showing you when we integrate things that have lots of lns, we're probably going to do ln k. Sometimes you might see ln capital A. That's another constant that they like to use. Um, and that can be useful. What, LNA? LNA and, 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 and Oh, so you know about, the, if you do chemistry, you know that adding constants, you can put LN versions of it. Yeah? Yeah, well, yeah. Sort, of. Yeah. sort of. Is this an equation in terms of K and A, and then you just LN the whole thing? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right, we're going to do, um, I think, just, oh gosh, a few of these. Like then you'd put uh, that would be squared and that would be squared. Oh, okay. Yeah, squared. just like it's all log laws again. Right. So it's luckily it's revision for everything that was from year, the year 12 stuff. Can I go on to the next slide in a second? Okay, I want you guys to do the partial fractions yourself uh, and then we'll come back and look at this together. Okay, I'm going to start doing it on the board. If you want to watch me doing it, you can go ahead with me doing it, but you should do this yourself, okay? So I'm going to do x minus 5 over x plus 1, x minus 2. That's a over x plus 1 plus b over x minus 2. So x minus 5 equals ax minus 2 plus b x plus 1. So x is equal to 2. So I get minus 3 equals 3, whoops. 3b, so b is minus 1, and if x is minus 1, we get minus 6 equals minus 3a, so a is equal to 2. Right, let's see how everyone's doing on that. Come on, get your partial fractions done for these, please. I've already done mine, you should have done them as quick as I have. I'm hoping you've got your, your answers. Okay, so hopefully you've got a is 2 and b is minus 1. So you're actually integrating 2 over x plus 1 minus 1 over x minus 2. <coughs> Bracket it because we're integrating the whole thing. Integral of 2 over x plus 1. 
Anika, what's the integral of 2 over x plus 1? 2 ln x plus 1. And the integral of this, Anika? Minus ln of x minus 2. And I'm going to add in my constant. I'm going to add in my constant as ln k. Just to warn you, you may see answers with plus c in, your, in the working out. You may see it with k, but just you, you know how to look at both of them now, OK? Um, so I can't put these bits together just yet because they don't have two, both of them, outside the front. So what do you think I need to do to this first one? Good. I need to change it from an x minus 1. Uh, sorry, an x plus 1 to an x plus 1 squared. So it's just going to become ln of x plus 1 squared. Not that it really matters, but you'll see I haven't put my um, modulus signs here. Why do you think I've not put the modulus signs here? Because it's squared, so it's going to be positive. It doesn't really matter, though, OK? Um, minus ln of x minus 2 plus ln k. So now I can put these together. So that's going to be the ln or ln of x plus 1 squared over x minus 2 plus ln k. I put the modular signs back in, though, because I'm not sure if the bottom bit is going to be positive or negative. And then I'm just going to put the k inside. I'm multiplying this by k. So it's the ln of k x plus 1 squared over x minus 2. What was the question, boys? Instead of plus c, I've just done ln k. And the reason I do ln k, it's just a constant, is because I can't put c inside this, but I can put the k inside this. So it doesn't matter. You, if you just do plus c at the end, your answer instead would be ln of x plus 1 squared over x minus 2 plus c. Those two things are equal. They're just expressed in a slightly different way. Oops. What, this one? Yeah. I like it like that, but I don't. No, I'm, I'm not. As a point of principle now, I'm not going to. <laughs> so there's one more for you to try on the next page. But before you try that one on the next page, can you tell me what form this one will take? OK, so it's going to be an A over, a B over, and a C over. Good, it's got a repeated linear factor, OK? So your challenge is to find out what A, B, and C are, and then I want you to try your integration for that. I'm going to do mine on the board, and then you can compare it to my one afterwards, OK? And then you can copy it. If I did ln x minus 2 cubed over yep. that, cancel out and just make that power 1, right? Yes. And then what do I do? That's it, you've got it. And so you keep an eye on that and getting the right answers. Yeah. Hey. 
Hamza, I think you've made a mistake. No, no. I know, I know. No, I never said I would have made a mistake. I think you've integrated this bit wrong. Oh, okay, yeah. So it was your x and minus 2 and then what? Okay. Good. What? He did ln. Oh, he did ln. This last one. No, because the derivative of this is two. So I've put my answers up on the board here. I shall leave them up there for you guys to compare. Okay, I'm going to stop there.